Hello everyone. Uh, so today we want to be discussing why trading the volatility index is so easy. So I think most people they like over, like uh, make make like they over sold volatility index in terms of making it a bit complicated than it's it is. Like trading currencies, it is challenging, but trading volatility index for me, I find it to be one of the easiest uh, thing to trade actually whenever you're trading forex. So um looking at this pair right as you can see the market has been moving upwards forming a series of higher highs and higher lows definitely respecting Dow theory we know that Dow theory basically states that the market will continue being in an uptrend up until a recently formed low has been broken so let's see it impulse a correction and impulse a correction and impulse so this entire movement this would be a correction but then price continued running to the upside failing to break this level right so once the market fails to break a certain level that it created so now you start considering whether this might be a reversal or it might be um, a consolidation that's about to form right so we had an impulsive push to the downside we had a correction we had an impulsive move so once we had this push back into this structure this is a consolidation now so now this becomes a consolidation right so now we do understand that we are in a consolidation Right. After that, we had an impulsive move, a correction, an impulsive move. Now we had a correction, right? Where price correct, we are currently in a correction, right? So remember that within an impulsive move, correction, impulsive move, correction, you can have like within a correction, you can have an impulse and a correction depending on the time frame that you're actually looking at uh, that particular market, right? So, so now the question that you have to ask yourself is that why didn't this uh price actually respect do theory then you have to convert it to a line graph just to understand it perfectly so now converting it to a line graph you can see that this is actually a consolidation right so if this is a consolidation if we view this as a consolidation then what are the components that goes into a consolidation so you have to know that there are actually two types of consolidations right so those two types of consolidations we have the accumulation phase we have the distribution phase. So this right now we view it as an accumulation phase because it leads to an uptrend, right? So a, a, a distribution phase is the one that leads to a downtrend. Is the one that leads to a downtrend, right? So question is what goes into consolidation or what goes into um, this accumulation phase or distribution phase. So there are certain things that actually go into consolidation. So one of those things that goes into consolidation, it's something that we refer to as a controlled price, right? So basically a consolidation, it can be, it's, it's, it's a consolidation, it's referred to as a fair value area, right? So what are the components of a fair value area. So a fair value area basically is an area that uh, buyers and sellers, they view it as an area that they are satisfied with. But a control price, it's a level that buyers and sellers are happy with, right? So you've got a control price, right? You've got excess price. This is referred to as an excess price where the market makes a false breakout. So question is, what's, what are the, 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 the importance of an excess price, right? So excess price, the importance of us having an excess price is that an excess price, it's something that uh, actually activates uh, traders. So breakout traders, they get activated whenever the price spikes below because they trade the breakout of a certain level. Because it's, if you can see, as, as you can see here, this is actually a another level that's of interest. So right. So this is actually a support level. So the, the other components that go into a fair value area, you've got a support, a resistant, an excess price, a controlled price, right? So whenever you see price breaking below and then coming back to respect to respect it, uh, the support level or the resistant level, just know that just just a mechanism in order to activate breakout traders, right? Or induce retail traders to come into the market and start considering placing short positions. So now we had this push to the upside because we do understand that this is actually an impulsive move, this entire move. There's an impulsive move. This is a correction. And then finally, we had what? An impulsive move. Right? So, but within that impulsive move, we had what? An impulse, a correction. And then now we are an impulse, right? So we can view this entire movement push to the downside as a correction. So market correcting this entire 
push to the upside. So those are one of the factors that you have to take into consideration when analyzing. You see how easy it is to analyze volatility index. This is like one of the things, like the name volatility index does not even sub, like it, it, it just, it's a literal explanation of itself, right? So when you say volatile, basically you're saying what? They are less participant, therefore they are more aggressive, move, aggressive moves. They are more rapid moves and then that's one of the things that we, you have to understand. So you have to understand that in a market that consists of high levels of volatility, therefore, if the levels of volatilities are high, then that means the levels of liquidity, they are low. So the market is not liquid. It's illiquid. So when the market is illiquid, that means it consists of fewer participants. So now where people can, uh, or where participant can buy uh, this particular index, they can buy it at different price levels, right? So there's really no competition for a price. So no, that means that buyers and sellers are not competing over a price. So that's one of the things that makes it easy to analyze this pair, right? Okay, now let's view this thing in terms of this, right? So we had an impulsive move, a correction. So now we were looking for ways to push price to the upside. Let's go to a four hour time frame. So you see, when you go to a four hour time frame, everything is self explanatory, right? This is where I actually took my long positions. I've actually closed my long positions as I've hit TP. This was my TP. I've hit my TP. So now, if I hit TP, what is the next move? What am I planning to do next, right? What am I planning to do next? What is, uh, what am I looking for? Those are the questions that, uh, you need to ask yourself as well like what is the next move so i won't be revealing too much in terms of this though. i just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually analyze volatility index like you don't necessarily need to be that knowledgeable in order for you to trade volatility index like i mean like even someone who like doesn't know anything about forex like can literally trade uh volatility index like it, it's it's not record sci uh, rocket science it's just something that's very easy people tend to make it sound like it's complicated they come up with these strategies hey volatility index does this there's a strategy what no man come on relax there's no such things so technically right now what i'll be looking for is that like um if i'm planning to take like short positions right so I do see that the price broke below this structure, right? This is like uh, the structure that it broke below. Uh, technically, I haven't had a proper swing. So this has just been a one impulsive move. So I haven't had a proper swing. So I'll go on a one hour time frame. So if I go on a one hour time frame, I do understand that now I have to get uh, the Doe theory coming into play now. So Doe theory states that the market will continue being in an uptrend up until the recently formed low has been broken. This is my recently formed low and it has been broken, right? So now I do understand that lots of sellers are coming into the market and then there's someone coming into the market and now plotting trend lines, right? About to trade this based on trend lines, plotting the trend lines. There are inner trend lines as well, right? So we can see this has been a channel. This can be viewed as an overextension. So don't get complicated. Don't get, don't let these things complicate everything. So you can literally just remove the ones that are not needed in order to just get a proper perspective on this pair. So you see, so basically that doesn't need to be clean or clear because like trend lines, they just like imaginary lines that we draw just to make ourselves feel better in terms of thinking that we know how to trade. So that's, that's, that's my opinion. So right now, like what I will be looking at right now before, if I start considering taking short positions, so what I'll be looking at is that I'll be looking for price to actually push to the upside, right? Pushing to the upside, maybe giving me that potential or giving me that formation of a right shoulder of a head and shoulder pattern so when i if i get i do get that right shoulder of a head and shoulder pattern i know that this right shoulder actually confluences with my supply zone so upon the return of a supply zone that's where i would definitely be considering taking short positions but know that the short positions that i'm taking they are short lived the entire movement here is bullish but the the, the short positions that i'll be taking 
there will definitely be a hedging mechanism, me trying to hedge this position in order to push price further to the downside, just to get that proper retracement. So right now I do understand. So if I don't get this push to the upside, what can I expect? I can actually expect something like this. Uh, I can expect something like this. Maybe something like this. Just get that nice. Uh, this is what we call a, a a corrective structure. This will be a bearish corrective structure, right? So I'll be considering taking short position based on the formation of a corrective structure. Then I will take short position upon the breakout of that corrective structure and continue pushing price further to the downside. So remember that the depth of the correction also depends on the amount of retail traders coming into the market and placing short positions. So that's my intake on uh, volatility index and how easy it is for you, for us to trade it. So I won't be revealing much on terms of like what I expect to do after I've got the retracement or everything. But like if you interested in like um, being uh, a part of our team, just DM me so that we can talk and then see how we can actually position you in our team. So because like in our team, we've got like a lot of people that are very dedicated and then they take the crockets with the straights, like irrespective of how the market is, they always try to push and then kind of like keep a positive mindset in terms of uh, forex because we know that this is just, uh, it's, it's a bit challenging, it requires time. So just make sure that you hit the like button there and then just uh, comment and tell me how you find uh, most of the IGTV that I actually post. Thank you.